So, we like an underdog, don't we? Someone not expected to win a competition ends up winning it against all odds. That's the sort of story for the OnePlus 9RT in a few ways. People were not expecting much from it. I did not expect it either, but it is actually doing really well. And in this video, I will answer just how it is doing that, what makes it better, who should probably buy this phone, and whether it is the best phone to get in this little less than premium segment. And believe me, the answer is not as simple as you think it is. All right, the thing about underdogs is that they are not perfect. They have weaknesses, big ones, but they end up winning because they play to their strengths. Now, let's see how OnePlus does that. Look at this phone. It is the same old cornered camera bump, the same old cornered punch hole camera on the front. The bezels are not uniform. The chin is bigger than less expensive phones. The display does not melt into the sides, but instead has a layer of plastic going between the display and the rails. I mean, the OnePlus 8T was cheaper and yet it looks much better even today. And it also lacks an IP rating. But at the same time, the design is premium even if the display doesn't seem like it. It's all glass and metal. It feels solid. It retains the beloved alert slider. The camera bump is not creative, but it certainly looks better than what OnePlus 9 Pro had. The display up front is bigger than the 8T and the 9R, but at the same time, the phone remains just as easy to hold as the 9R and 8T were. And the two colors it comes in are also good. The hacker black is the best one, but the nano silver is glossy and yet resistant to fingerprints. Hence, safe to say that OnePlus played to their strengths. They designed a phone that feels better and more solid than other phones by using the materials and the finish that they have perfected over the years. What about the display? Well, it satisfies the common standards that have been set in this price range. 120Hz with a full HD Plus resolution. And yes, it is marketed as a display with a 600Hz touch sampling rate, but it does not work consistently at that. It only works while you're gaming. It is slower and at times slower than other phones. For example, have a look at the test I did. This app shows the touches recognized by the screen when I swipe over it, indicating how responsive the display is. This is what happens when I swipe on the 9RT. And this is what happens when I do it on the S21 FE. Did you see the gap in the dots for the 9RT? The 9RT is clearly less responsive. But at the same time, if you actually see the quality of the panel, it's amazing. It is sharp. The colors are never oversaturated or muted. They are just right. Using the phone outside is never a trouble. But as you can see from the test, it does deem it less responsive. But in actual normal usage, that's never really a disadvantage. In general use, it feels responsive, even at times more responsive when you're coming from an older phone. And where the latency does matter, which is gaming, it is outstanding and works as advertised. Watching content on it is also a treat. It is HDR10 Plus certified with support for HDR on Netflix. See, I still do hate the chin and the plastic lip, but it is a quality panel that I appreciate. So again, OnePlus playing to their strengths. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the three cameras on the back. Well, you're mostly going to use two. The two megapixel macro camera is a needless addition that no one really wants to care about. Even OnePlus doesn't want to care about it. Here, look at the specs list on the OnePlus 9RT. Under the macro section, there is nothing except two megapixels, which is the resolution, and nothing else apart from that. And the shots from it go through a thick layer of processing to look acceptable. You need a lot of light while clicking a good shot and even then you have to be forgiving for it to be acceptable. And the tiny punch hole front camera, that has more details on the specs list but to be really honest, it's pretty much the same as what we've been getting for a very long time. It's the same setup and I do not understand why OnePlus is so reluctant to upgrade this setup. It does not do well with details. It does not do well with colors or skin tones. All the post-processing does is fix the dynamic range and that is about it. The video recording resolution is also still capped at 1080p. All right, let's flip back to the two cameras on the back. They tell a sharply different story. The standard wide 50 megapixel camera is honestly amazing. The shots it clicks 
look really good. The sharpness is on point. No matter where the shots are clicked, indoors or outdoors, the details are well maintained in all scenes. At times, like 2% of the images might have something weird going on. If the lighting is weird, the details at times might not be there or the image taken might end up being over sharpened. But again, that's just 2% of the time. The dynamic range is as good as it can get in this price range. The colors take the saturated and punchy approach, but only so much that the image still looks natural. The larger sensor also brings in a great natural bokeh for when the subject is up close to the camera. The camera right below that one is a 16 megapixel ultra wide one. For the lower resolution and the wider angle, it is softer with details, especially around the edges, but still it does manage to keep the details intact in most scenes, except where the light is not ideal at all. It does the job expected out of it more most of the time. And for the times that the lighting is really bad, OnePlus's Nightscape is keeping up with the times. It continues to be one of the best night modes, all because of how natural things are kept. The night looks like the night, it does not suddenly become evening or dawn. You know, unexpectedly so, this camera can shoot really good videos, especially from the main sensor. It is very well stabilized by default. There is absolutely no aggressive color shifting. The dynamic range works well with both the subject and background well exposed. The only weakness I felt was the muted colors and the details in low light. But apart from that, if you want to shoot videos with this phone, you are in for a treat. And yes, it does go up to 4K at 60 FPS. There is also an ultra stabilized mode, but that reduces sharpness and resolution as 4K is not available in that mode. Overall, it is an excellent camera from OnePlus on the 9RT. If not the best you can buy in this price range, the most balanced one. And they depend on their strengths of great post-processing along with the great main sensor. And both of these combined do most of the magic for the camera. All right, software and performance, they have uh, complications. The current version of Android on this phone is Android 11, on top of which is the Oxygen OS 11. This is the makeshift version of Oxygen OS with Color OS being infused into it. So that means you will see multiple apps and UI aspects that are from Oppo's Color OS. And there have been bugs like random restarts, uh, recent apps not showing up even if I'm swiping up and holding. And there was once this weird case where the phone icon on the dock, it just, you know, chose to stuck around throughout the UI not going away until I restarted the phone. The phone restricts its frame rate to half of what it is capable of in apps like YouTube, Uber and games. Many of the great Oxygen OS features still remain, but for how long, I do not know. With the Android 12 update coming soon. Three major updates and four years of security updates have been promised for this phone, which is not as good as it sounds because the phone should have already launched with Android 12. But apart from the bugs and the flaws and the older version of Android, everything so far has been very smooth with the software. Everything is very well optimized and the phone works great most of the time. The UI is buttery smooth throughout without any slowdowns or hiccups. Yes, color OS is infused, but the bloatware is not a lot more than before, not nearly as intrusive as other phones in this price range. And when we talk about performance, the phone blazes through. It is fast, it is smooth, it makes everything effortless, apps load up fast, and they stay open for as long as you need them. And to top it all off, I have not noticed this phone heating up all that much. I would play Call of Duty with maxed out settings for an hour or so, and it, it only got warm to the touch. But maybe the Delhi winters could have something to do with it i'll test it out further and let you know if there are any changes during the summers follow on twitter for that i'll update it there so even with the small bugs and the weird android situation on this phone i do think that this phone is extremely amazing with its performance and okay with its software especially since oneplus is concentrating on its strengths of great optimization lack of bloatware and at the end of the day prioritizing experience over Headlines. Battery life has been average. My usage has been mostly moderate and I would take the phone off the charger at 9 a.m. and I would need to charge it back by 11 p.m. or midnight. Mostly the day consists of WhatsApp messages, calls, emails, social media, listening to music over Bluetooth, typing out scripts sometimes and about an hour of video calls. And my screen on time was mostly limited to 5 to 5.5 hours with all of this usage and the brightness kept at 60 to 70%. Now I could go a step further and 
use this phone heavily and kill it maybe within just a day but at the same time it does come with the comfort of extremely fast charging the phone can be charged up from 0 to 100 percent in under 40 minutes and at the end of the day if i look at most people this battery life is going to be enough for them because most people use their phones moderately and if you're a heavy user you have the charger to depend on it's not the best but it will work for most people Now, time to look at the small details that the phone needs to get right in order to tie a good, cute little bow on a great experience. Because a great experience is always going to be better than headlining features. I don't need to think a better version of this line because it just doesn't roll out of the tongue that well. All right, the speakers, they're what you expect. They sound good and loud. The vibration motor, it's almost perfect. You can easily differentiate between a function based on the kind of vibration you get out of it. A click when the phone is unlocked. A small dash while moving the cursor around. And a small little tick when you're typing. And a strong earthquake if your alarm is ringing or your mom is calling. On a serious note, strong vibration when all of those things happen. Even the more expensive S21 FE has an inferior vibration motor inside it. And you will get a case inside the box which is a good quality one. Along with that you'll also get a pre-installed screen guard on it. And you will need to protect that screen because the glass on the front is not the toughest. It does get scratched up easily because I do have one or two scratches already within a month of use. So, now you know what this phone does, what its strengths are, what its weaknesses are. And yes, it does a few things which are not great. There are more expensive phones like S21 FE, which can do everything that this phone does and also comes with better software situation because it comes with Android 12 out of the box along with a promise of four years of software updates and there are phones cheaper which can do certain things better than this phone but none of those phones have it all they may be better in some ways they may have better features but they end up having severe flaws in other departments and the s21 fe may be the better phone but it is also priced higher the 9rt gives you a great display fast performance amazing camera good software and reliable battery life, all for the price of 42999 It plays to its strengths, outweighing its weaknesses, and it wins. And that is why it is the goddamn underdog. If 42999 is the only amount of money you want to spend on a phone, get this phone. And if you can spend more money than that, subscribe. S21FA review coming really soon. End of story. Goodbye.